Continuing on with energy math, starting at number four. A home uses 10 100 watt light bulbs for five hours per day. How many kilowatt hours of electricity are consumed in one year by using the light bulbs? This is a very common AP type of question, so it's a few numbers together. Notice that I bolded out a couple of words for you, especially year, because year is a word that kids forget because they're giving you these numbers per day and they're gonna expect you to multiply by 365 days per year. So let's first start at the beginning. 10 100 watt light bulbs. So 10 times 100 watt light bulbs times five hours per day. And when we multiply this out, we have 10 times 100 is 1,000 times 5 is 5,000. And we smush the watt and hours together and we get this per day. But it wants it per year, so we have to multiply by, oops, sorry, I forgot a zero. It's 5,000, not 500, times 365 days per year. And so our days cancel. And <clears throat> when we do our calculation, we get 5,000 times 365. And we get 1,825,000 watt hours per year. But it asks for it in kilowatt hours. So I could have converted back here at 5,000. So there's a thousand watts per kilowatt. Um, so I could have divided this by a thousand there, or I can divide it here at the end by a thousand. Um, or I can move the decimal place back three times to convert to kilo from watt. And I explain that part in number three. So <clears throat> my answer when I do any of those steps um, those options is 1,825 kilowatt hours per year. And so that's our correct answer. All right, so now we're at number five. Mrs. Schertz's electric bill for the month of February showed a total of 640 kilowatt hours. Her bill was 128. It's actually really cheap for electricity, but it was February. How much money per kilowatt hour in February? That's part A. So let's do that. So we are gonna set up a proportion. And I'm gonna make this nice and big to give myself more room. <clears throat> so how much money is it per kilowatt hour? And we know that um, the uh, amount that was the bill was $128. And it said on the bill that we use 640 kilowatt hours. So <clears throat> I'm going to divide now 128 divided by 640. It actually comes out even because back in the day when kids couldn't use calculators, all these numbers did come out nice and even. But a kilowatt or often, even not always, but anyway, it comes out as 0 0.20 per kilowatt hour. So <clears throat> we already have, there's no units to cross out here. We have dollars, we have kilowatt hours, and we wanted price per kilowatt hour. And so our answer is this for A. Now for B, it asks if we use the same amount of electricity for the whole year. How many megawatts would her family use for the household? And I have a parentheses. Remember to convert kilowatts to megawatts. Again, the AP test will not remind you. It will expect you to know 
um, and read the problem carefully so if you left it in kilowatt hours it wouldn't be correct because it said to convert to or how it, the, the question asks for megawatt hours okay so if this is not a very accurate bill because in February electricity is cheap because you don't use much air conditioning but um, let's say this was the same amount of electricity so we're using a 640 kilowatt hours per month and there are 12 months per year and so now my months cancel and <clears throat> with a calculator I can just punch in 640 times 12 and I get 7680 kilowatt hours per year so now I need to convert to megawatts so a kilowatt you have to know this for the AP test you have to know your metric conversions a kilowatt is 10 to the third a megawatt is a million so mega millions think of mega millions mega is million and that's 10 to the six so six minus three is three so I need to move my decimal point three spaces and so here's my decimal one two three now why did I move it to the left instead of the right well kilo is 10 to the third mega is 10 to the six so mega is bigger and I need a bigger unit I need megawatt hours per year so because I'm going to a bigger unit I need to make a smaller number and so when I go to the left I end up with a smaller numbers number 7.68 megawatt hours per year and you don't have to have that zero on there if I had moved my decimal the other way one two three I would have ended up with a bigger number and so I knew that would be wrong so we have a bigger unit means a smaller number and then vice versa too. a smaller unit means a bigger number so that's one thing that you can uh, use to help you um, remember which way to move the decimal okay next one number six a therm is a unit of measure for gas mrs. Schertz's natural gas usage was 74 therms for the month of March 49 therms were charged at a baseline of 74 cents per therm and 25 therms were charged at over a baseline of 98 cents per therm what's the total price of natural gas so this is just really um, multiplying and and adding so in our energy bills throughout the United States we often have cheaper electricity for some of it and more expensive for some of it I'm sorry energy so natural gas is therm it's not an it's a it's how we measure natural gas so the cheaper natural gas therms were we used um, 49 therms and <clears throat> that one was 0.74 um, dollars or 74 cents per therm and then we went over the baseline so this is the cheaper price and everybody starts with the cheaper price and then the more energy you use the more expensive that energy becomes and then we used 25 therms so this is the winter so a therm is natural gas we have a gas heater so um, the more we heat the more expensive it is because the price goes up too this is also if you have a bigger house you're going to spend more on energy because it's going to cost you more and to heat it and cool it and the price goes up the more you use it so what it's really doing is it's subsidizing poorer people who live in smaller places they get cheaper prices they don't use as much energy and so they don't pay as much for their energy bills it also is a way to um, help people uh, conserve energy so on the AP test if you're asked about conserving energy what's one way well you can say um, utilities uh, you, the government can mandate different prices for usage for utilities and so this was a way here our electric bills are the same way we have three tiers for electricity with different prices so it's a way to help people conserve energy too. 
All right, so the next one is 78 cents per therm. And so our therms completely cancel in these problems. And when we do the multiplication together, this one ends up being $36.26. And this one is $24.50. And all I've got to do is add them together. And our total price is $60.76. So I'm just adding those two together. And then this is the answer for A. And then the next one is just, hey, how many therms per capita? So we don't need the dollar amount at all. All we need to do is take 74 and divide that by four people in the household. So that's a really simple problem and you end up with 18.5. Now, um, again, for a, an FRQ, make sure that you put your units in your problem and in your answer. So I would have 74 therms up here divided by four people and I get 18.5 therms per person. All right, going up to, or going on to number seven, Peter and his friends want to make a road trip to Yellowstone National Park this summer. Yellowstone is a thousand miles from Saugus one way. His car gets 20 miles per gallon and gas costs four dollars a gallon. How much will the gasoline cost round trip? All right, so this is kind of a long problem. Well, not that long, but okay, here we go. A, so he wants to go a thousand miles, but that's one way. So we have to multiply that by two for round trip. And his car gets 20 miles per gallon. And so anytime you have the word per, you can draw a line and you can actually choose which one you want on the top and the bottom. So 20 miles per gallon could be 20 miles per gallon this way or it can be like that. Um, so you can choose whichever way you need to have to cross out things. So let me get rid of this. And um, I'm actually going to write this a little smaller up here. So this is 20 miles, I'll just do MI for miles. So now my miles are going to cancel out and we are going to run this through the calculator and we end up with a hundred gallons of gas that's needed. So we have a hundred gallons and it's four dollars a gallon. That might not be the price right now, but it's sometimes four dollars. So we're just going to do this math as it as it is right here. So it cost four hundred dollars because our gallons cancel out. So it would cost four hundred dollars for the gas to to drive to Yellowstone National Park round trip. Okay. Peter thinks that renting a more fuel efficient car might be better. The rental gets 50 miles per gallon and costs 250 to rent. How much would the total round trip cost including the rental? All right, so um, let's find out the price of gas with the rental. So we start out with the same problem, 100, I'm sorry, 1,000 miles times two for round trip times one gallon over 50 miles now. And we're gonna end up using only 40 gallons of gas instead of 100. Now that 40 gallons of gas times $4 a gallon is going to equal $160 in gas, but the price of the rental is $250. So 
So all of that together is going to cost $410. So it would cost more to rent the car even though it cost, cost, cost the same in gas. But it might be better overall because you wouldn't have wear and tear on your car, so it might end up being probably about the same or actually cheaper to rent the car because you wouldn't put miles on your car. All right, we'll continue on with the next video.